Good morning, everybody. Welcome to FMA Professionals. I'm your host, Datu Tim. Today's topic will be the last of a three-part series, uh, how to host a training camp. So um, right off the bat, anyone out there, please say hello. I love to hear where everyone's coming from, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. So let me pull up my thing. I'm still getting better at this software thing. Uh, I just need to check one one thing. I've got to get a new mic or a new boom for my mic because I'm leaning forward. So, you know, it's very organic. Let me see. I got my microphone set up. It is on the road microphone, which I love my road microphone. My speaker or my headsets is for the road microphone, which comes through here. Um, bum, 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 bum. So please, everybody, give me a shout out. Who is there? Can you hear me? Uh, I like to make sure that I can be heard by all my friends and family out there. I know there's two people watching. I know there's a delay on this, too. <laughs> okay, let me see here. I'm going to uh, pull this up, get this over on my other computer so I can see what's going on, see what you guys see. Um, yeah, it is working. Um, let me pull this file. I want to see. For my headsets is for, hey, let me see here. I'm going yep, to, it is uh, working. So I'll pull I, this uh, up. I'll put that back on mute because no one needs, needs to hear that. Okay. So, uh, today's topic once again is on, um, hosting a training camp. This is the third part. So part one, um, actually I don't remember what the order was. So one of these we did, um, how to host a seminar. Another was how to host a tournament. And then the last of the three was how to host a, uh, what this one is, is how to host a uh, training camp. And um, had some issues, and I'm going to share that with you guys. Nothing major. Um, you know, it was just um, the usual stuff uh, I'm trying to get through and uh, Doing some old school stuff that needs to be changed. So, um, yep. Good morning, Mr. Larry. Um, you can hear me, Larry, right? So, um, okay. So, uh, we just did our training camp. It is uh, the second one we did during COVID. So, I do a hybrid event. Now, everyone's going to say, what the heck is a hybrid event? Well, I'm going to tell you what a hybrid event is. A hybrid event is an event that is done. It's a physical camp with with virtual attendees. I do my seminars that way. Um, it's been really, really good. So uh, not everyone's going to be able to do this. So if you have that kind of control and access to that kind of technology, it brings the participation rate up because obviously we know that some people can't do to COVID. Um, also, um, and glad that you can hear me just fine, great. Also, uh, we get people from other countries that normally wouldn't. So not for this training camp, but when I've been doing my Blint Walk seminar, the series there um, is uh, I would, I had, uh, let me see, we had throughout the United States, we had Canada, we had Sweden, Germany, and Austria attending. So that rocks. These are people that normally couldn't get in. Now I have a big screen TV at my location. I've got a, a Brio, um, a Logitech Brio camera, which has 4K capability, even though we don't have 4K streaming yet, but it's a 1080 uh, camera, uh, works great. I use Google Meet, and I uh, and I haven't done my due diligence. For those who went to camp, I'm sorry. What we do is we record it and then send a copy to everybody. It's all processed. I just didn't send stuff out. So hopefully today I'll do that. I've got a few things I've been... Uh, struggling with at school, just getting a lot of trying to, it's that after camp catch up period. Just, it's always slowing. Uh, Greg, nice to have you log in from Canada. Now, uh, before we go any further, please, um, if you can go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, you can even watch it there. Uh, they do have the comments come in here. Um, I've got two of my Datu channels It long, well, long story short, I lost the credentials of one, started over, found the old credentials, got things going. Now I've got, I put everything on both of them. So, um, but let's get into it. So first of all, as we talked about in the other events, what are the do's and don'ts of, uh, of doing a training camp? Now, um, 
let's go through the list of things that you should be looking at doing. So, and I'm going to take some people through some of the stuff. Um, so first of all, we need to have proper, we have, well, we need to have a venue. So I actually have a 5,000 square foot facility. I'm here all the time. I maximize my rent by doing that. Um, it's going to be dependent on the size of your event and what you're trying to do. Now, um, we have some challenges here in Buffalo. So if we're, if I'm looking for a camp, like an off-site facility, the wedding industry is huge here. Very, very huge, which is different in the Metro DC area, at least when we did the camp down there. So we went to, I, I go to banquet halls left and right and hotels. And they, when I go to negotiate, sometimes they want ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for a weekend. Um, because they can make that in a day at times with weddings. Because she said, all right, the hall rental is like three to $5,000. Okay. But then there's also plates of food. And, you know, you go to uh, a person, a banquet hall or something, and you want to rent their place, they make a good chunk of their money off of meals. So a lot of times they'll ask you, you know, how many, how many meals are you going to guarantee? It's like, well, I don't need meals. And so, you know, you got to see what's in the area. So like a banquet facility I wouldn't go with. Um, I've used fire halls in the past for my events, which uh, you know, if I was going to, I was prior to having this location, getting into this plaza, you know, Professor Prasis was traveling around and he, what he was going for is trying to get a camp in every state that he has a location. So he was going to work, he'd do a camp every weekend. And then just take the rest of the year off because you can make good money off of a camp. So I looked at a place and I actually had a fire hall here. I had students that were involved with that as well as being the, the chief at the time. Very reasonable rates. Very reasonable rates. Unfortunately, they make a good chunk of money off of doing bingo. And I couldn't, um, I couldn't get that night. So I would have had to work the schedule around it. But the nice thing is, as a martial art vent, we don't bring a lot of gear unless you're doing grappling. Everything you need, you can carry on your back. That's the great thing about Filipino martial arts. But most martial arts will be in that same boat. So, you know, you got to try to find that venue. And and there's a lot of challenges with that. So um, if you have the facility like I do, I just do it right here. Now, another challenge, because it's a weekend event, is having... Um, having a hotel. Now, what I'm going to bring up is uh, my, I have a website devoted to our memorial camp. And once the memorial camp is over this year, it'll flip over to be the uh, modern Ernie's anniversary camp. So um, with no further ado, I'm going to pull this over here. i got to find the right window I like. I'm going to share. I'm going to share a screen. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Done. And what I'm going to do is... Oh, escape, escape, escape. Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to get rid of Greg's good morning. So, right here, I have a dedicated camp. So, right off the bat, you come to uh, our website. It's praisesarnese.com. Websites are fairly cheap. Um, you know, you got to pay for hosting and stuff like that, but at the website itself is fairly cheap here. So I'm actually going to go full screen on this so we have a better view. All right. So uh, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm gonna, uh, you don't need to see my face. I've got an ugly face. Okay. So here we go. So um, I got to update some more stuff, but we have the home, the hotel, the contact about it. Most of this information is right on that front page. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I can... If, you know, I'm, I'm going to take this banner and get rid of this here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Boom. There we go. Now you can see better. Okay. So right now I have a button. I hit it. It opens up a separate window and I can register for the camp. So um, it's good to have, to be able to accept payments. Now we'll talk about that in a minute. So right now, you know, we're talking about the uh, Modern East Reunion Camp. Actually, it's supposed to be the wrong. Okay, the Modern East Reunion Camp was the biggest Modern East event in North America after Professor, uh, uh, Professor Price's passing. Martial arts around the world, 
Arch Rush Around the World Conversion Buffalo to share memories of our late teacher. This is such a sm- it was such a smashing success. We decided to do a twenty year uh, Rem Prices Memorial Camp. Obviously, no one had any clue that COVID was on its way uh, was going to affect things. So things are going to be a little different. But right here we have the about. So it talks about it repeats that again over here. I have got a. Um, video. Uh, but I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to stop that because what I'm going to do is remove this. I got to do it again because there's a little little some something I got to take care of here. Stop screen. Okay, good. Um, there's issues. So what I got to do is when I share a screen... Share screen, share audio. Okay, so hopefully I do this right. So hopefully you guys will hear this. And I'm going to go full screen. So I use um, WordPress, and there's a theme called Divi, which allows me to do all this stuff. So I was able to put this together. So this is right on the main page. So my question, everybody, did you hear the audio? Let me hear from you. Let me hear from y'all, my brothers and sisters. Um, bo- 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 what, what plugin service are you using for registration? Um, you set up, your setup is smooth. Uh, does it auto populate lost attend- lost attendees? Okay, uh, okay. Now, um, bo- 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 loud and clear. Okay, I'm glad you had that. So. Um, we'll get back to registration. And if I get, go down the rabbit hole, Greg, your job is to keep me on point. <laughs> that, that's, your, that's your official job. Now you're the Datu's assistant, chief executive dis- assistant to the absent minded professor. <laughs> okay. Um, so here we go. Once again, look, there's a button right here on the website opens up a separate window. It, so I don't lose the window. You want to stay on the website. But here's an extra window. This is my registration. We'll talk about it in a minute. Once again, here we go. I ask for them to register again. A second chance to get them. Now I've got to put more information in here. That's my bad. We talk about our staff. Now, we just had the staff in the video, but once again, here's our staff. Uh, so, uh, Datu Tim Hartman, you may have heard of him. Uh, we've got uh, Master Rich Parsons, Poonang Gurus Chad Doolin, and Ty Botting, and then Gurus Mike and Mae Williams. So, um, initially, the camp had more people, but with the COVID restrictions and everything we were going on, at the time, I had to make a business decision. I had, uh, was when I made the decision, only... 30 people were going to be allowed to be in my building and 10 with staff. And I was not going to ask everyone to come to Buffalo and lose money on this. I want to make sure right now the economy is all jacked up and I want at least the expenses to be, to, to be taken care of. Now, since then it's changed, but like Dieter, I was talking the other day, uh, as well as I've been what I've got acquaintances in Germany that are in the martial art industry. They just shut down their German camp. Um, And he wouldn't be able to come. Well, he could come over, but he'd be mandated to uh, self-isolate in the city that he flew into. So the initial point of contact would have been three days, probably New York or something. That could have been a grand just for there. Then he's got to pay to get retested, not to mention food. Um, You know, that's a lot. of Plus his airfare and all this other stuff. There's no way he was going to get anywhere near the money back 
uh, let alone put a couple of bucks in his pocket to, to come over here, you know, and that is, um, um, that is a, um, you know, to, to ask someone to, to leave their family for the weekend, um, to do stuff, um, you know, that's, that's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. You know I mean? I want to make sure it's worth their time and effort, you know? Um, so the WMA members, which is master rich Chad and, and master Ty, we all decided long time ago when COVID first hit, we were, as long as we could travel, we were all coming together to pay homage to professor. These are, these are my family members. And we were going to remember our father adopted the uh, martial father and tell stories and talk smack. Cause that's what, that's what we do. Um, the, the Williams, they were already planning coming up here, but I, I cut the rest out because you know what, until things get back to a new normal, or get back to the normal, you know, I want to make sure that everyone's taken care of one way or another. And, and here's the thing, 40% of all schools have closed down permanently. You know, um, our industry is having a really rough time and getting people to support events. You know, it's not going to be like it was when I did 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was a smashing success. Money was put in everyone's pocket. Everyone was worth their time to come here. It, it made it fine. So just if, if people remember this event and they're saying there used to be more instructors, I had to make decisions based on COVID. And that's that's a call that a host has to make. And we can talk about that later. So right here, um, I just put in yesterday the schedule. Um, I got to put a better schedule up. But right here, we have a pre-conference date. So the camp officially starts on the Friday, but we've done this for decades you come in on Thursday and people get extra training. So there's actually an extra registration fee on that. So um, once again, okay, so we have the schedule Friday. Okay, and we'll talk about the schedule because that was a big change I made. So look, I'm going to hit that button again. We're back at the registration. Now, I use the software I use. Is, uh, it's the school management software is called Spark. There's a bunch out there. I like Spark. Um. And that's all I'm going to say. I like Spark. I'm not going to go into comparison to others. I had other companies. They weren't designed specifically for the martial art industry. Uh, I've had a lot of good people talk to me about Spark. I went that direction. There's plenty of software out there. Uh, you know, there, so I use Spark. You could use Zen Planner. Um, and that's the only one I can remember off the top of my head. I used to use Mind Body. I got away from that because that was more for spas and gyms. There was some cool functions on there. But when I switched over to uh, to Spark here, and I don't get paid to mention their name, <laughs> Spark, Spark, Spark. I wish I got like 10 bucks every time I said Spark, Spark. Um, but uh, every time, uh, the more, I mean, they they really, they really serve my needs. Uh, it took me a little learning curve, but I tell you, it, I'm very comfortable with the software. Now, if I use Zen Plan or something else, I'd probably be very comfortable with that as well. And um, now here's the thing with the registration, having this window. Now I, I got to put more information in here. That's, that's on me. Um, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up another, I'm going to do it elsewhere. I'm going to bring it over in another window. So you don't guys don't have to see stuff. Uh, pull this up. Uh, go into my checkout pages, and I will bring up one of my pages for another event. Uh, let me see. Did I do this right? Let's see here. Yeah, let's do this one. Let's see if this one's looking good. I will open this up. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to pull this over here. Go back to where I was. Okay, so this is one of the checkout pages. So I would put the link on wherever, and we'll talk about where you can put it. <laughs> Sounds like a joke. So I have my graphic up here. I have all the information. This is Pontotukan Two uh, with Tatu Hartman. Simulated boxing, limb destructions, advanced trapping. Um, seminar info date is June nineteenth. Time noon to two Eastern Savings Time. Equip or um, cost thirty five dollars. Equipment needed, boxing gloves. This is a, a hybrid seminar attend in person or on Google Meet. All participants will get a digital copy of the seminar. 
physical physical location is Horizon Martial Arts, and I have a separate little icon there, a little different branding. Now, when you go down here, you can put in, I, I can do multiple things. Um, when I'm signed in, you know, would you like to participate? Would you like to put another participant in there? I can click and add multiple people. So I have all this field in here. Then it's got it captured. Once they've put their credit card in here, I have it for future events. If it's one of my students and they say, hey, uh, one of my guys just picked up a pair of sticks today. All right. Uh, do I need to pay you cash? I said, well, or would you rather have me build a card on file? Do the card on file. Done. Now I can go in and do that anytime I'd like. So um, this is what it looks like when you have the information filled out. This is what happens when I get distracted. <laughs> but here we go. I have the opportunity for the memorial camp, and then you can click extra to do the extra conference. So now the event went from $250 up to $300 for an extra day's work. And it's work, but we have a good time. Now, they take all sorts of credit cards on that form. Now, let's say you don't have Spark and you want to take credit cards, but you can't. I would advise um, services like what I like the most is Square. It's what I have the most familiarity with. I also use Stripe, which is another version of Square. There's other companies. Square was the first one that came out and got the ball rolling. I can send invoices with that. I can have links that people, but you can do a PayPal link as well. So there's multiple ways to take that money uh, you know, for people to register. Um, I like I like this one because it will capture all of this material or uh, information right here. And when they come here, what do I do? I have them fill out a waiver. Okay, so let's get back to the website now. Um, I now the nice thing here is I'm gonna go here. Uh, let's see if I can do this fast. That link that I just showed you um, for. Um, for uh, bum, 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 bum. come on, sometime today. That link that I showed you on the um, the page there can be put on Facebook. Yay! So uh, when you do your Facebook event, Oh, no, that's next year. Okay, so the memorial camp. So here's the problem. When you're looking at things, right now, I'm looking at it as the host. So it doesn't show me all this stuff. What it doesn't show me is where to get the ticket. This drove me crazy one day. So I have... Um, I have... Uh, an administrative account that I can look at things. So right here, now I flipped it over to my personal. So let me see if it, so it's not gonna really do that for me because once again, I'm looking at someone who can edit this event. Let me see, um, I don't usually look at my events from this point of view. I'm probably looking right at it. There should be a button for tickets. Um, when I go to put the event in there and stuff, you know what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to uh, the fall flame. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, that one Sideways. All right, I'm going to go back to the World Monarchs Alliance uh, page. I added events. Um, there's going to be a fundraiser for uh, Roel Vera on um, next month in Virginia on the 12th. Here we go. Uh, the seventh annual sp uh, Spring Sprung FMA thing. And Arnice International is the person who is hosting this. It talks about all the information here. Where you can 
sign up, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know. I'm doing, oh, you know, there may not be a, a list for tickets in there. All right. Um, I really don't want to do that. Okay. So um, trust me, somewhere here there is a spot that, that you can sign up. Um, you know, my events that I'm going to. Okay. Um, oh, okay. This is driving me crazy. Oh, here we go. Find tickets. There we go. There's where the button is. So when I edit this, I can put a link right there to uh, take it to that page. So in this case, I hit the find ticket button. It's for an event I'll be teaching at next year. And it takes it to Terry, Terry Dow's website, the Martial Arts Symposium. This is in New Hampshire. Um, and here's, oh, look at that lovely face there. Okay. Photoshop does wonders. So these are the kind of things you can have, you know, like when you're having that software, you can bring it anywhere you want. Okay. So let's get back to the website. So from here, you know, like I said, I've got the schedule. One, two, three buttons on the main page that allows me to register. So you're keeping asking for that, giving them that opportunity to to make that uh, registration thing. So now we go to the hotel. When doing a hotel, I highly recommend going to an, uh, a national chain if you got them. I set up a commercial rate or a corporate rate, which is not the same as a block of rooms. I don't want a block of rooms. What I want is um, a corporate rate, which allows me to get a discount for my members all year round. Okay, that's the cool thing about this. All year round, these guys get a discount. Okay, and right here, what I did, uh, I've got a slider. Here's the hotel room, which is one of the rooms. There's the front lobby, and there's it. We use the Country Inn and Suites. I have a, a deal set up, so I talk about the hotel on the left, on the website, and I talk about how to register. Now, here's the deal. I've got a single or double occupancy, one or two beds. It is $99 plus tax. Or I can get a suite, which is a queen or uh, it's a king, one king bed or two queen beds in a separate room and a pull-out couch in the main room. Now, it also comes with breakfast and stuff like that, and they are serving right now. So if anyone's thinking about coming to the memorial camp, the rooms are not held. They're there until they are gone. So, uh, and right here, I have information, the booking procedure. So what you're going to do is you're going to call this phone number right here. Okay. And then just simply mention the Horizon Martial Arts has a preferred corporate rate with us. Okay. So this is what they're, this is right from the letter they gave me. So I put it up there. So you see the booking procedures. I cannot tell you. Oh my God. I cannot tell you how many times I get phone calls from people that don't read. And they're constantly telling me, I don't know how to register. I can't find this. They can't this. First of all, <clears throat> I told you everything that you need to do. I've had people call me, well, there's no block rooms. Of course, there's no block rooms. You didn't read the registration information. Right down here, I have the hotel information. The, here's the physical address. And once again, there is the phone number. Now, about as a page I put up and I didn't... I didn't finish this. I, I, I have so much work to do. I'm so behind. My bad. Um, but I was updating these as things going on, and and you know, COVID has been giving me a different direction. Okay, so if you look, if you ever see a website, and you have all these gobbledygook letters. That is, I forgot what they call that, but that is just placeholder text. So uh, this says the person didn't edit this, so I didn't get to that yet. Still got the video. I've got the staff again with the bios that I haven't put up. Gobbledygook text. They also got social media links, which I haven't done in there. Oh, but once again, we register for the camp. And that one I didn't do right because I didn't put in the link. So the link to that thing, but at least it brought to the same page. So now right here, here's the contact information. All right.
get in touch with us. You have a question, use that email address. Um, need to call, you call that right there. Uh, there's the email address for the press, and there is the camp location. Got to say something, send us there. And once again, here is that link. So after going through this, this shows that I made one, I left out one little button to get that taken care of. So I feel pretty good with this overall. So let me uh, stop sharing. All right. So for all of that, does anyone have any questions about what we've discussed so far? Or what would you like to hear about next? I, I, I know what I'm going to talk about next, but you know what? This is supposed to be as interactive as possible as I can for talking to people on the internet. So what do you got for me? Is everyone hanging on every every word I say, or, you, or did I bore you all? I only got four people looking at me right now. I feel a little lonely. Someone give me a shout-out. Where's my Chris Davison? Every word. Thank you. Makes me – see, Greg. Greg's making me feel good. He's brown-nosing me. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Um, I have recently changed the way I do my camp. So when I first started doing this, I was um, – I had a lot of people teaching, and I was trying to jam. And when Professor Praces did his camps, we got there on Thursday at noon. When we went, the big one was MSU, Michigan State University. So we would get there. Um, we'd get there around noon and uh, get checked in. And then there was an orientation at two o'clock. And then we do a couple hours workout. And then we do seven to nine. And then we do a meal at seven to nine. Um, that was Thursday. Friday, we would start at 9 in the morning, go three hours, do a lunch, go three hours, do a dinner, go three hours. Saturday, the same thing. Get up in the morning, 9 a.m. We, we do breakfast. Then it's 9 a.m., three hours, new, um, then like probably 1, one thirty, three hours, dinner break, three hours. And then Sunday morning was the test. Now, I was doing something similar to that. I... Uh, was just really jamming on uh, all of the uh, same amount of hours, but in less time. Because we would train, you know, we, we did training uh, uh, noon to, uh, or I'm sorry, we'd get up at 9 a.m., train, and then uh, what would we do? We would go to the... Um, uh, I'm having that moment. <laughs> Help me, Greg. No. Um, what we would do is we would. Um, okay, I got. I got to see what I need to see. Something uh, distracted me. Squirrel, if you know up. So um, we took a year off. You know, basically two years off because of COVID. We we had to cancel camp last year uh, for the spring camp. We did do our summer camp. We and both of our camps follow the same format. Uh, last year was fine. This year, it ended up dragging. And it wasn't the quality of the camp. It was the fact that the quantity of physical attendees. Now, I had uh, 12, 15 people here physically. And uh, and some people weren't here the whole weekend. And uh, the other thing was that there was a bunch of people attending virtually. Now, if all those attendees online were here physically, the energy would have been a lot different. Um, but what we noticed was this, we'd get up, we'd be at the club at 9 a.m. training, uh, 9.30, we started late, you know, fifth quarter after the 9.30. Um, then what would happen is um, we would go to whenever, and our, our, our format's fairly organic. I don't really follow a set schedule per se. Um, we start at a certain time and we end at a certain time. What we do is whatever we want. Uh, when I have teachers here, I, I, you know, when, when, you know, so when I have, um, when I'm going to have uh, the uh, memorial camp, I'm going to talk to the uh, instructors and I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to give you about a 45 minute to hour session. Okay. Then when it gets time to that end of that session, I'm going to walk up to them and go, all right, you got about 10 minutes coming up. Are you on schedule? Are you going to be done early or you need extra time? And uh, 
a lot of times uh, it was like, you know, can I get an extra 10 minutes, you know, after the, after, you know, cause I have 10 minutes left. Can I get another 10 on top of that? I'm like, eh, take 30, go to whatever. Other times it's like, you know what? I'm almost done now. Let's, let's give me five more minutes from this moment. We'll end it a little early because any other topic is going to take too much time to get into. So, um, so that part of the schedule, we're very organic and stuff. Um, and it worked out, it's worked out very, very well. But we would train in the morning. We would train up till 9 o'clock every day. And um, then we'd go out to get some meat. So Garden View was the place in the past. Now we're at Applebee's. Um, and there's nothing wrong with Garden View. It's just that a couple times we've went in there because of the New York State restrictions, their hours are have been more modified than others. That used to be a 24-hour place. We rolled up a quarter after nine, uh, 8. They said they already closed. I'm like, 8 p.m. at night, you're closed. So then we started going to Applebee's, and, you know, they really did good by us. You know, and, and they've always done good by us in the past. It's just, you know, I know the family that owns the Garden View, and, uh, you know, you try to you try to help help out your family there, right? You know? So, um, but then, you know, okay, so we're, we, we train till 8, 8.30, go out to dinner, get back to the house, it's like 11 o'clock and we're not done talking until like one or so in the morning. And then I got to be at the club at 9 a.m. And I realized that if I was missing social opportunities, so were a lot of other people. We burnt some people out. So what we're doing now is the schedule is tentatively we're going to start at 9 a.m. on Well, you know, what we're going to do is Thursday is that extra day. So we're going to go. Um, we're going to start at noon because we usually start with my afternoon class uh and then it'll be off and on throughout the day and end around eight o'clock we'll go get some meat and then we'll start 9 a.m every day but we're going to tentatively end around six o'clock which will give us time um like so when we do the when we do the uh memorial camp we're not doing any testings or anything so what i'll do is i'll order from our guy next door pudgy's pizzeria uh, I'll order, I'm going to order a couple sheet pizzas, providing people like pizza, which most of our people do. And we'll just do a little pizza social and say, hey, if you want anything else, I'm going to buy two sheet pizzas or more, depending on how many people are here. I'm going to treat on the pizzas. If you guys want anything else, go next door, order ahead of time. It'll be ready for six o'clock. And then we can all hang out here at the club. Like I said, I've got a 5,000 square foot facility that used to be a banquet hall. So it is geared for this. Um, Saturday, we're, uh, we'll do the same, but at six o'clock. We're going to have like a seven o'clock dinner. So it'll be six o'clock ish. We're tentative to close. We'll probably close about five thirty, quarter to six, go to the hotels, whatever, then meet where we're going to meet uh, for our memorial dinner. And then Sunday we'll do nine to noon. And if we feel the vibe, we'll keep going. But if not, you know, uh, I got people driving in from, um, I'm having a, we've got um, the, the Williams are driving in from Boston. Uh, PG Ty is coming from Virginia. Maryland is where uh, TV uh, PG uh, Chad's coming from. If Lyman shows up, <laughs> and I don't know who's Lyman is, he just shows up all the time. He's the Where's Waldo of the modern Ernest world. Uh, I'm teaching in in uh, Barbados, and he walks in the room. Like, oh, hey. I'm teaching in Germany. He walks in the room. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, everyone's like, oh, my God. It's like. Why are you getting more excited? He shows up everywhere. He's not following me. He just he follows modern Ernie. So you never know when you're going to bump into him. He'll be driving to a seminar, stop in, driving home from another one, stop in. You know, um, we love Lyman. We love him. He's a great guy, you know. But, um, you know, but, um, you know, he's coming from Maine. That's a long drive. Um, and then other people. Now, the Memorial Camp, I've got some people that, well, uh, we have people flying in from Durango. Colorado. It does exist. I only thought it was in the cowboy movies. Um, and if you're old enough to see all the cowboy movies I saw, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the, um, you know, so we'll probably do extra, I'll probably do training for those who are staying an extra night who aren't taking a, a flight home that day. I'll probably do some extra stuff, but, you know, uh, or pick up some privates and stuff like that. But generally that's about it. And, you know, the thing here is what we have to balance is the training and the social. I mean, because part of the reason everyone comes out here is to hang out with each other. You know, what's the goal of the camp? Okay. 
this camp is not about anything in particular except for paying homage to our teacher. Now, obviously, we're going to share the material. Um, and um, I'm, gl I'm glad you like it there, Kent. Um, so um, be nice to us Durango folks. I'll think about it. <laughs> so um, with... Um, you know, what's, what's the topic, you know, like what, what's the mindset? Like, so this camp that we just got done doing, um, we are prepping for the future. So next year, I wanted to do a big test this year to pay professor, uh, honor to professor. So, um, unfortunately we're not going to get the people that we wanted here because well, you know, COVID. So we have to deal with that. But the other thing, so what we decided to do is, all right, next year is the uh, um, the other thing. I got a whole other thing here. I got people messaging me while I'm talking to you all guys, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other. So next year is the 65th anniversary. We um, we should be in so much better position by then. COVID will be in our rear view mirror. Now I'll be looking over my shoulder. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say, Hey, we're done with it, but we're so much stronger now. Um, we're allowed what's going to happen. Hopefully, hopefully what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, my position is if any of us have to wear masks, we all have to wear masks. I'm not going to play the COVID police or the vaccine police, but for the training camp, if everyone comes up and shows me some form of, of vaccination information i am more than happy that if everyone's been vaccinated to go without masks now new york state okay so there's a app on my phone right it's hard to do this right there they have the excelsior pass oh gotta line that up so it tells all about who i am i'm gonna go like this and here is my covid vaccination now, some people say, you know, there are going to be some people who are like, hey, you know, I don't want to have something like that. They give you a paper card. You can bring it. Actually, you don't have to bring it. Take a picture of it. You know, in my phone, I took, the first thing I did after I had my second vaccine is I took a photo of the, um, of the, um, of my card. So I had a file of it, you know. And I will trust you guys. I mean, you know, I don't think anyone's going to Photoshop a card. I mean, that would be really going above and beyond the cost of duty, you know. But right here, you know, I've got my COVID vaccine card just in case something happens. I know you guys can't see that. Well, it's probably best that you don't for security on my end. So, so if everyone's if everyone's vaccinated, I'm more than happy to go without masks. But next year, we should be good to go. So what was the theme this year in my camp? Prepping us for next year because the, the goal is to have a large black belt graduating class of 2022 to celebrate 65 years of modern Arnis. So what is your goal? Are we doing a sparring camp? Are we doing a uh, uh, sword camp? Whatever. Fill in the blanks, whatever we're going to do. All right. Um, now, um, as usual, you need to make sure you have flyers. I'd even do print flyers. When I did that, those videos that we showed, that was done. Can, who, can someone tell me how I did those videos? It's a hint. We've talked about it in the past. It's been a topic here. Can anyone tell me how I made those videos with, uh, uh, with all that stuff? I'm waiting. Make you guys work. It gives me a moment here. I'm pulling some Stuff up. Let's see if I can bring some other. Anybody? Anybody? Yes, Canva. So I have the premium Canva. So uh, with the premium Canva, um, I actually uh, get to uh, use music and. And plenty of other things. So they have a huge, huge video library. Now, if we're advertising this, now where do you advertise? Facebook, Instagram, you know, 
and a lot of people complain about all these things. Like a lot of people are leaving because of the political nonsense. Um, I ran a, a, a martial arts discussion group. It's called FMA Talk. I've recently shut it down. I'm going to reinvent it, and we're going to do some things with it. But at the end of the day, if I didn't like what people were saying, I took it off my site. And there's certain topics I didn't want on there. And seeing that it was I was paying for the site, no one else was. I had a right to do whatever I wanted. It was mine. So I know a bunch of people who've left Facebook because of that. But I'm going to tell you what. <clears throat> I don't blame the Facebook execs to not want anything on there that they don't want. They own the site. They pay for the site. Of course, they benefit from all the advertising. But here is the thing I'm going to say. Can, uh, not camera. Facebook was a huge factor on me surviving COVID. I was able to book appointments left and right with all the stuff for my school Facebook page. And uh, it was free. All this free services. Also, you know, I was with, I'm, I'm with Maya. I'm on their edge program. And um, they were doing a lot of community videos to get us through this for non-members and just anybody, you know, and listening to them on almost a daily basis. Um, it really helped me get through this. It is the 800 pound gorilla when it comes to advertising. So by all means, Facebook and Instagram. And remember Facebook owns Instagram. Those are the two big machines. Well, actually the third machine is YouTube. Uh, you can easily, people love videos. So that's why I do the video. That's the first engagement. The only thing I would say, if you're going to do a video, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to go to my Canva because that's what I'm going to do. All right. What am I going to use here? Which one do I want? Um, up, 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 up. Let's do the YouTube and I'm going to. I'm going to do, um, no, I'm going to do Datu's Corner. I'm going to talk about next week's uh, episode of Datu's Corner. So this will be the ne next week. Monday should be the last Datu's Corner of May because the following Monday is going to be Memorial Day and I'm going to be shut down. You know, I've got an event actually I'm doing, uh, internal event here at the school, prepping some people for a tournament. Um, actually, that's not till noon. I could do it. You know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll do it. I'll, we'll see what happens. I'll decide in a week. Uh, Datu's Corner. Um, so. I'm going to share a screen. Monday's, <laughs> Monday's topic is. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay. Fantasy versus functional training. Okay. <laughs> is your martial arts, are you living in a fantasy world or are we pre training for real martial arts? Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm expecting a good one. I've had a lot of, actually, I was talking to some, some of my boys out on the uh, West Coast, um, the, uh, some of my Stockton and, and uh, guys down in the Sacramento area, and they're like, wow, you've got really controversial topics, but you're not being controversial. You're just talking and you're having a good time and a good decor, you know. So um, this is, you know, a, a big pet peeve of me, mine is people who are doing martial arts teaching fantasy garbage to people and calling it self-defense. That's what the topic is. If you're not teaching self-defense, it won't be an issue. So anyways... I'm going to, I'm gonna, okay, so here's what I'm going to show you what I normally do. So right off the bat, here's the cover of this, um, and I, I made it a promotional video. Now, here's the mistake I made. So right off the bat, I'm going to hit animate. I'm going to do fade, or actually, no, I'm going to do, uh, I'll do tumble. And the time right here, I'm going to do five seconds or whatever. I'm going to do any seconds. It doesn't matter. Now, when I process this video, Here's the problem with this. Actually, we're just going to play it. Let's see. No audio. Just play it. Actually, I'm going to go here to get a better scene. And I'm going to play and see if it does what I expect it to do. Hold on one moment. Uh, 
Okay, let's try that again. Close. Okay. So it did do exactly what I expected it to do. So I'm going to go, I'm going to back this up. See this frame? Oh, son of a gun. See this frame right here, all in black? Okay. So um, when I process my video, this is what shows up as the first frame when I'm putting it on Instagram. Now, I could be doing something wrong. I'm still learning. Might be the first to, to admit that. Uh, I usually just put this on one second. And that way, when it does this, it ought, there is no fade. It just starts off with this for a second. Okay? It does this for a couple seconds. I, I don't have the audio on. I don't think I have the audio on this one. And there we go. The topic has the date. And just Monday mornings at 11 a.m. Okay. But the thing I found out is, uh, let me see if I can pull this up here. Okay. Oh, good. It, it showed up. It's perfect. So right here, if you look at, um, here's the uh, hosting a training camp. See how the frame comes up that way? And the, and the black frame here, it doesn't show what's going on. Uh, the countdowns. It doesn't have, when, when you load this, so here's a video right here I did. Testing results. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this. So here's a nice testing results one I did. I'm going to share the video. Stop sharing. I'm going to share the video directly. And... When I looked at it online, it was a yellow square. Uh, so when people look at it, they're like, why would I click on a yellow square? Like right here, testing results. Okay. So, um, when we do things, I start off now, now, because I got better at this. First thing I do is I put the image in. There's no fade. There's no twirl. There's no nothing. That way, when you look at it on Instagram or wherever, it should show up with that window, and you see what you're about to click on. Um, so, these are these are some inch, little hit, hints when you're doing advertising there. Um, Instagram and Facebook, huge. And then develop a... Um, develop a mailing group. So, um, you know, the nice thing about my, um, I, well, I said I use Spark, 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 Spark. When I use Spark, I actually have a category for uh, people, a tag that, you know, they're virtual events or WMA events or, or tournaments, and that's how they came in. And then I can actually send emails campaigns specifically to them unless they choose to opt out. Um, about upcoming events. And, you know, I'm I'm not doing the advertising I used to do because I got built-in clientele. You know, I mean, I still should be doing the everything, all the basics I talk about. You know, first thing you do, you should post up. Okay. Then you should make a comment in there. Then you should follow up and do something maybe like once a week, throw a post in the event, share the event places. Um, but I've gotten to the point where a lot of my stuff is on automatic. That being said, I kind of go back to the basics and make it bigger and better. Why? Well, simple. When I get lazy, you know, there's things. My school, I lost a lot of money due to COVID, and it's an ongoing thing. I lost probably 50% of my clientele. So whatever I lost this, this past year in COVID, it was probably, we figured it was probably three years worth of it, you know. So let's say let's say I took a hit for twenty thousand dollars last year. It's actually sixty thousand dollars overall because I had a whole bunch of students. They left, 
Uh, and they, a lot of the ones that we counted, they were probably good for another two to three years. But because I started my hustle, get, I mean, got back at doing the basics and more, I'm doing better numbers now than before COVID, before COVID. And part of, part of my, part of the problem was that the, uh, my success in the seminar market tour, I was for the last two decades, I've been averaging 30 plus seminars a year. Um, unfortunately, when I'm doing 30 plus seminars a year, that means I'm a lot away from the school a lot. I've done a seminar. I've done at least one seminar a month now, and I, had, I haven't had to leave my school. Uh, I'll do 12 seminars this year, which is a little over a third of what I've been doing. And I don't have to leave because I have these hybrid virtual seminars where people are coming in and training from around the world. And I'm making sometimes better money than going on the road. So, you know, once again, when we look at this, why are we, what's your mission statement? Are you trying to get material? Are you trying to make money? I tell people when you're hosting a camp, um, making money really shouldn't be that. It's a factor. But I don't host a camp to do mo- to make money. I mean, I make sure I make money. But the thing here is that my goal is to get my people to the next level. Uh, when I host a when I host a seminar, I'm bringing someone in for advancement of knowledge. I'm not trying to. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in. You know, I <clears throat> I get these guys. I would get these guys from the UFC. Their managers reaching out to me. Such and such fighter who I've never heard from is doing a seminar tour. Would you like to have him in? And the answer would be no. I mean, okay, yeah, maybe having one of these top names would bring a bunch of looky loos through the door to check out for an autograph thing, but would they train with them? I don't know. But to be honest with you, the person I'd want, because I'm thinking from a martial arts point of view, not a not a uh, not a fan point of view, I want to train with their coaches. You know, who trained Ali? Who trained um, Tyson? Who trained Manny Pacquiao? Those who are because you know some of the best competitors out there in any sport. Are, would be terrible coaches. They were coached to be, they didn't do it on their own. As a martial artist, a lot of times we're forced to be both people. We're supposed to be the coach and the participant. Uh, I wish I had a coach. I wish I could have someone that could just come in here and coach me, um, even with doing technique. You know, Even if they knew a third of what I know, if they watch from the third point of view, they could say, Tim, you know, you're dropping your guard here. You could be better off here, blah, blah, blah. I mean, Oh my God, I miss, I miss, I miss having a coach. I mean, and you know, listen, I still go out and I train now, not as much as I used to. Um, I, uh, I'll, I'll catch a seminar. Like when I went out to New Hampshire, uh, last in April, in April, um, I was watching all the other instructors like a hawk because I was learning left and right. I was, and I was asking questions and stuff and I wasn't on there. I wasn't training. Because my my rule is this, if I'm an event teaching, I do not train until all of my teaching responsibilities are done because I've seen too many instructors hop in someone else's class and get injured. Once in a while, I'll break the rule, but usually I I keep that rule fairly good, it's fairly solid. But man, I got to ask, I got to question a lot of people and it definitely helped. And I I got some really cool intel. And I also started changing the way I do some other of my things because I watch how people teach, and I'm going, I like what they said. That's a better explanation than I use. Let me use that. You know, sometimes people have better nomenclature. Sometimes they don't. Okay, so um, I'm thinking I'm pretty much close to being done. So once again, let's talk about this. You got to have a venue. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go back to the venue for a minute. When it comes to the venue, um, let's say you're trying to get a venue. You got to check it out. Like I said, I, I told you how Buffalo is a it's a wedding town. So for, so getting anyone to give you a place is terrible. I mean, you pay big bucks. Um, the Buffalo Convention. Oh, excuse me. The Niagara Falls Convention Center in the United States, because there's U.S. Niagara Falls and Canadian one. We have the better falls. <sighs> Those Canadians got the best view. <laughs> but um, so. My friend does used to do a tournament up at the Niagara Falls Convention Center. They have banquet facilities, and then they have the convention center. He wanted to use the banquet facilities. It was cheaper for him to use the convention center because the, the convention center made more money 
off the banquets and the weddings. Now, when I did a seminar, we were in Herndon, Virginia. Herndon, Virginia? I think it's, I think it's right. We're right outside Washington Dulles Airport. Um, we got the weekend for $500 because the place was they didn't use their meeting halls and their banquet halls for banquets. They used them predominantly for business meetings. And on the weekends, everyone got out of town because it was all the Metro DC area. So it's jam packed during the week and a ghost town on the weekend. So we got a really, really good deal. Um, so, you know, these are the things you got to go check into and, uh, and talk and, and, and do your research. You might find that place. That's phenomenal. Uh, that you can't turn down, but I mean, I love doing everything in my school. I don't even want to go on the road anymore. I mean, I do and I don't. I mean, I, I love I love being on the road. Don't get me wrong. But it's been so nice teaching in my school that if I needed a piece of equipment, all I got to do is walk five feet and grab it. My Oh, my God. I'd go to seminars and I'd bring like 100, 100 bags, of, 100 pounds of gear. You know, I, I, I hear all these military guys that have been my students over the years and, you know, former military. I didn't teach the military. I taught people who were in the military. I go, yeah, you know. Um, we used to have to hump around with a hundred pounds of gear. You mean like this? Goes, yeah, <laughs> you, you're carrying the same quantity that we are. Why do you need all this stuff? You're just going to hit a guy with a stick. Well, I never know if I'm going to need a knife, a hatchet, a, a hammer, or this, that, the other thing. You know, I, I want to have all the tools in my club. I can just walk over and grab what I need. I need a kicking shield. It's here. A focus mitt. It's there. A crash mat. Don't take those on the road. All right. Um, so find a venue or have your own. As usual, get it insured. If it's not, get it, get extra waiver for the event. Do that advertising, Facebook, um, Instagram. Those are your two big ones. Besides local, um, collect email addresses. Uh, email, email, email. I mean, it's good to have the paper addresses, the physical, but email is the way to go. Have some form of processing electronic payments. Now, I use my school software. It's not a big deal. I just let everyone know, hey, it's going to come through as Horizon Martial Arts, just so you know. Got it. Uh, I use Square on the road. Um, I've got Spark here. Um, I have a website. Okay, you can do it with a Facebook page, but websites are king. Okay, everything you do out there, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, TikTok, and that's a, that should all funnel down to your website because your URL should be permanent. You know, Instagram could disappear. Facebook could disappear. You know, uh, TikTok, you know, they keep hearing all these different things. Um, you know, uh, I can't remember some of the old style stuff I used to have. My, I used to have MySpace. <laughs> MySpace. I hear people are still using it. I remember people who have, I have no people who have their AOL accounts and their Hotmail accounts. Um, you know, I use Gmail. Why? Because I have an Android and need to have a Gmail account. It just works better. But I've had that. I mean, I started off with a Hotmail account. That worked until I went over to Gmail. All right. Uh, I can't think of anything else. If anyone has any questions, feel free. Dot to Tim at gmail.com. Now, I got a question for everybody. I'm, I'm working on a project. Um, I'm looking for people that teach Filipino martial arts, hopefully exclusively. Uh, I'm looking to find some schools for uh, a future. We'll talk about it later. I want if you if you know someone who teaches exclusive. Exclusive is not the Inasano Academy. The Inasano Academy teaches Jeet Kune Do and Filipino martial arts are one of the many programs that are offered there. Um, right now, what I'm trying to find out is schools, and uh, that teach exclusively and my boy miguel ruby teaches one in sacramento hey uh michael or miguel what's the name of your club he teaches doce pares as well as yao yan which is a filipino muay thai for lack of a better term uh you so uh what is the name of your club my friend so while he's hopefully the delay, you could be seeing that, you know. Um, ah, here we go. You got to go here. Rancho Cordova Martial Arts Center. And he also sells Filipino martial arts supplies. You may have heard a place called MyFMA, um, MyFMA.net or MyFMA Supply.net. That's my boy. Great Kamagong sticks, 
great kama. I've got like oh, I said I got some kamagong swords from him. I got a nice parong. Um, he's got some live blades here and there. You'll see him on Facebook chopping things up with a blade. And uh, oh, ma, okay, fmasupply.net. Go there. Not a sponsor, although I bet you if he gets a lot of clients, he'll give me commission. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> uh, I'm just joking. Um, so, um, if you know anyone who's teaching FMA exclusively or half and half, you know, I, I knew some modern Arnie's guys that were half Kempo, half Arnie's. I'm really looking for those exclusive FMA schools. It doesn't have to be a full time school. And what I mean by full time, that this is what the person does for a living. But it's a brick-and-mortar location dedicated to promoting Filipino martial arts. That's what I'm looking for. Not someone who's subletting from a karate or taekwondo school or an rec center. Uh, if you know anybody or are, you are one of that guys, I've got a project that you might be interested in, message me directly, dot to tim at gmail.com. Please go to our YouTube channel. Subscribe. There's two of them, two dot to tims. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like the video. Hit the notification button, and please, by all means, feel free to share this wherever you feel appropriate. Uh, I just did our, uh, uh, on the channels, we just put out the uh, Little Arnisadors, Little and, and Junior Arnisadors Part 2, FMA for Kids, talk about how to spice up your Sinwalis, teaching advanced Sinwalis. Episode 3 will be coming out soon. I'm also working on a Modern Arnis Minute about Sinwali, uh, open hand, uh, single Sinwali application drill Professor Price used to do. Monday, are you doing functional or fantasy Filipino martial arts? I don't have a topic uh, for Friday I'm of next week. I may be postponing it because that is Memorial Day weekend. So I, I might not do anything on Memorial Day weekend. Um, but we are going to talk about curriculums in Filipino martial arts. You know, how to get people to where, you know, um, if you're going to have a goal, people need to see what it is. All right, everybody, please, as always, um, stay safe and stay sane. Thank you for tuning in. And this is Dr. Hartman saying goodbye and enjoy your weekend. And uh, we'll see you in a future episode of FMA Professionals. <laughs> <laughs>